I'm talking about that tea. The tea is back, everybody. Welcome back to a wonderful review of Wonderful Precure, episode 33, Full Animal Smile. We have a pretty simple episode to go over, which I will happily take. We have an episode featuring Iroha's father. We start off at Iroha's place, and we see all the dogs just playing around in the dog run, and seeing how Iroha's father interacts with them. I like this, like, opening shot with Kamugi, like, roughhousing, because that's just a very normal dog thing to do that's just fun but it's also like more aggressive when you actually witness it in person and i like that they include this as just like it is normal dog behavior even if it's a little intense in reality i also like that he does the whole doki doki pose but with like a circle because it's like full circle sort of situation for this episode uh, i assume this is a nod to doki doki because as of this recording and as of this episode the doki doki sequel novel has debuted so i feel like this was just a little nod to that i would be keeping it relevant for those of us who remember the day but nonetheless we start off with talking about how his role is i, I think they they refer to it as a trimmer but he's just like basically a pet groomer i think would be more of like the accurate term like obviously here he does trimming but for the most part i think he's just like a pet groomer is like the more normal term for it and he just showcases that he's pretty competent at it and the animals really get along with him and he enjoys it and and I think it's really it's just overall a pretty sweet episode i like this bit with the claws because there are cats that are like so upset when you click like you like sit there and you kind of like file down or clip their claws a little bit like not fully remove them but just like you know trim the nails i do that with my cat all the time she does not care her only like qualm with it is she doesn't love having her paw hold it for like a while but for the most part she is very content getting her nails done so it's <laughs> It's cute to see Yuki upset. I also realized that Yuki has not revealed that she can talk to Iroha's parents. Like, her, Iroha's parents are so okay with, like, Mei Mei and Kamugi, but I, I think it's funny that Yuki is still keeping the secret that she can talk. I thought that was just kind of, like, a funny detail that they decided for continuity. Not quite sure what the holdup is, but I guess for the scene, it works for her to not be, it'd be a non-verbal cat. But the main conflict, or even if we can call it that since it's pretty pretty mellow for this episode is we're having problems with the dog mocha who does not like listening to her owner or to listening to anybody it's a very distracted dog and we see iroha's father come in and save the day being like i know how to handle this also we see my favorite character no i'm not referring to my mayor nico i'm talking about that tea the tea is back everybody when are they selling this? Like, they can't sit here and design teacups in a teapot this cute and not sell it. Like, they have, like, a really tiny version of it, but I want, like, a legit teapot from this show. And it is a crime that it is not on sale. And in the meantime, with our main cast, we go to hang out in Iroha's room, which I am surprised it's the first time that Satoru has ever gone to Iroha's room. I mean, she's gone to his room, but we also saw that for the first time in this series. Like, I, I think it's just the Japanese thing where you usually don't have people, I guess, come over to your place when you're of the opposite gender. But like, it's so normal here. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. When I was a kid, I didn't really have any qualms with having people come over and hang out with my room or me go to theirs. But... It's always interesting to see this be like kind of a contentious point in anime. But I also think they just saved this so we could see his goofy silly reaction. And goofy silly it was indeed. He was all nervous. But cute little Daifuku who thankfully is in this episode is like get it together man get it together i also will be very very brief with this tangent because it is a bit spoilery for people who may not want spoilers so f spoilers for the wonderful precure movie briefly ahead i'll put a little sign on the video so you know but they did reveal in the wonderful precure movie that daifuku does indeed get a human form and on top of that he and satoru do get forms in the movie like some kind of magical forms they have not been confirmed as precure forms I think some people like fan have called them precure forms, but it was very nice to finally get some payoff, even if it was movie exclusive. I think at the end of the day, I am not remotely surprised that that's what happened. They did so much hiding and they did so much like weird hiding in regards to Daifuku and Satoru for this movie, so I assumed this was going to happen. My only thing is that I would really wish it would be part of the main series in some way. At this point, I think the most likely thing to happen is that Satoru and Daifuku get their forms once again or some kind of form at the conclusion of the series. 
it'd be lovely to see them be part of the like maybe next power up that we get with Nico since this is kind of following the Smile Precure situation where Smile Precure did upgrade their forms towards the end of the series and like a one third kind of split. It'd be really cool. It'd be really cool if we got that here, but no promises. Um, without showing their forms, I am gonna say I'm I love them. They're so cute. They're obviously not as heavily detailed as an actual cure form, but I really like Daifuku's human form. I really think Sasuru looks so cute with his power up. I just, oh, it was a good time. They also, interestingly enough, at least the chance for Daifuku to get a permanent human form in the series, especially since they keep saying he's so special and so important. Um, they are now including Daifuku's human form in the acrylic merch, specifically for like, I just saw the fall one, and they have human form Daifuku in, in the lineup. So I don't know if that's indicative of anything because they'd never do that with movie. Like anything that's unique to the movie, they do not have continuity with the other merge lines. So I do think it's very interesting that we have the reoccurring Daifuku human form be included. And it's very likely since they did it this time that Daifuku will go on to have his human form in every line for the rest of the year and basically for the rest of the season. So I'm going to keep a keep an eye on that. I'm very interested to see where they go with these two characters moving forward. But without further ado, that is the end of spoilers. And of course, Mayu comes in and interrupts and she's like, huh, what's it like being in your crush's room? Does it make you nervous? Like, Miss Ma'am, she doesn't, not as nefariously as I just made it sound, but poor Satoru constantly getting tormented by Mayu. Uh, and then we get a backstory because we do wonder, which Satoru brings up, that groomers are in the area are not typically men. That's typically a feminine role. Without saying it being a feminine role, that is pretty much the implication here, which I, I guess I'll say that I like that they are talking about gendered roles to a degree without actually saying gendered roles. I feel like they're definitely dodging talking about it directly, which I have a hate-love relationship with them not being on point. But that's essentially what they're doing is that this is a position that's typically held by women and being a groomer or specifically a pet groomer is not necessarily something that a big burly guy would do. And we have Irha's mother clarify that this is exactly what he's wanted in life. He has always wanted to have this position. It's been his dream and part of them meeting, part of their little romance story that we get is her being supportive of him and telling him, like giving him tips in order to appear more approachable to the animals. And that's the one thing that I like could make this a little bit better is I love a good flashback. I know Precure does not always do flashbacks for something like this, but I would have loved to see a flashback of the younger version of them meeting and her encouraging him to like make his voice a little bit more high pitched so it's a little bit more inviting for the animals. I don't know how true that is. Like fact wise, I don't know how true it is that like I know for humans a deeper voice is more intimidating than a high pitched voice. I don't know if that's necessarily true with animals. I feel like we all just naturally do that because that's the inclination that humans do. I don't know if there's actual like math, like there's also some math and science behind that. But I think logically speaking, that's just a conclusion that we could draw because we definitely raise our voices for animals. But that's just me going into a baby voice in general. But overall, I think it's opposed to, again, aim more towards talking about the gender role without saying the word gender role and make yourself more soft and appealing rather than kind of gruff and intense. But yeah, I would have loved to see, I would have loved to actually see him fail in the past and then have to try to be more like use the high pitched smile voice, the smile mode activate. But it is what it is and we get what we get for this. And overall, he's able to, you know, bridge the gap between him and Mocha and get Mocha to pay attention and focus, which makes the owner happy. And honestly, it's just like a cute little scene. I do want to point out, and I know it's just for the sake of the lesson of the episode, but like this is another episode where Kamugi could have just solved the problem. Similar to the episode where she was doing like the dog show acrobatics thingy that I can't remember the name of. Once again, she is a human level dog at this point because of the magic that she could sit there and just say hey mocha in dog language pay attention but she just doesn't and it's always for the sake of the lesson of the episode but i'm like this could be very easily solved if kamugi just used the fact that she can understand humans and animals now but of course we get to the second half of the episode which is fairly disconnected i guess it's because we don't want to transform too many dogs into gado gado and we got to like mix up the animal usage but this second half of the episode felt a little disconnected and they really had to work pretty hard to make it relevant. Because here we have a random gadu gadu, like we just get a random boar slash pig out of nowhere. 
instead of, I think the assumption was that Mocha was going to be the one to get turned into a monster, but we literally just, we monstered up on the other side of town. How polite. Uh, and the pig is a pig. I'm not a big fan of pig. <laughs> it's just piggly, piggly wiggly. Also this jump right here, uh, why is it so good? This is like a high level jump acrobatic scene. The animation is really nice in random spots of this episode. I guess it's because the fight takes up more of the episode. Because the whole message with their father was so short, so much of this episode is dominated by this battle. So I guess they just had to get creative because we do spend like a good solid three to four minutes of the pig not listening to them and them being like, we can't fight the pig because it doesn't even pay attention to us. But instead we do try to tie it back with the whole smile mode situation and trying to distract the pig. We have this cute little bit done with Nyami that was showcased in the previews of the previous episode, which everybody's like, what must be happening? And it's one of those scenes where it's like, come on, you have to join in if you want it to work. And we have the most like, ooh, woo, cutesy moment with Nyami and Lillian. And it's so adorable. It's a good bit. I gave it gave me a little chuckle. I'm not going to lie. And then we have Torame just sit there being like, hmm, you know what? I should have won. And then scampers off. I, I, I miss having goofy, silly villains like this. And in the meantime, the episode of... This is a preview for the next episode. The episode wraps up all good, nice, neat. It wasn't like a particularly deep episode, but I'm glad that we spent time with Iroha's parents and sort of delved into them. We're going to have another parent episode next episode on Mayu's side. Just kind of rounding out our supporting cast. And then we got this preview just once again proving that the fox kitadine animal is unhinged. This is terrifying. Like, Wheel Kamugi was bad, but like, what even is this? What do you even call this? It's like a feather duster kind of thing, but like, it's modern. Looks like a giant Q-tip. This is horrifying. I'll see you guys next week. Until then, bye-bye!